I'm not Andrew Tate. What I am, the first is that there is not one of you fools out of a hundred out there watching that is going to hook up with a girl that is rated as a six or more in current 2024 society. And furthermore, not going to be able to attain the status of top G, not by a damn sight. <laughs> Andrew Tate is very mean. I'm not Andrew Tate. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to tonight's special debate where we delve into the origins of American Independence Day and explore how the British-American relationship has shaped the Anglosphere we know today. We have social media star, kickboxing world champ and intercontinental playboy Andrew Tate, who was born in the USA and spent his formative years in England and has a complex view of both nations. Let's get started. American Independence Day, July 4th, marks a significant turning point in world history. The relationship between Britain and America has evolved drastically from that moment of rebellion to a strong alliance that shapes the global order. As someone who loves both countries, I see the celebration of Independence Day as a testament to the enduring spirit of freedom and democracy. Thanks, Piers. While I acknowledge the historical significance of July 4th, my perspective is more critical. America's foundation on rebellion and independence is intriguing, but my formative years in the UK have made me appreciate the stability and heritage of Britain. The British-American relationship is complex, and while America has achieved much, it often does so at the cost of its own stability and unity. Andrew, let's start with the origins. The American colonies declared independence from Britain in 1776, primarily due to taxation without representation and a desire for self-governance. This was a radical and brave move that inspired other nations to pursue freedom. True, peers. But let's not romanticize it. The American Revolution was also driven by economic interests and a desire to escape British mercantilism. The Founding Fathers were not just freedom fighters, they were also elite landowners who wanted to protect their wealth and status. The revolution had noble ideals, but it was also about power and control. Certainly economic factors played a role, but the ideals of liberty, justice, and democracy were paramount. The Declaration of Independence articulated a vision that has inspired countless movements for freedom worldwide. The American Revolution was more than just a power grab. It was a profound statement of human rights. I don't disagree with the impact of the Declaration, but let's remember that America has struggled to live up to those ideals. Slavery persisted for nearly a century after independence, and the country has been plagued by internal conflicts and divisions. The vision was noble, but the execution has been fraught with contradictions. Moving on to the British-American relationship, it's clear that the two nations have had a complicated but ultimately beneficial partnership. The special relationship has been crucial in shaping the global order, particularly in the 20th century during the World Wars and the Cold War. Indeed, Piers, but that relationship hasn't always been smooth. The British Empire's decline post-World War II and America's rise to superpower status created a shift in dynamics. Britain has often had to play second fiddle to American interests, and this has led to a certain level of disenchantment in the UK. Perhaps, but it's also important to note that Britain has benefited immensely from the alliance. The cultural, economic and political ties have strengthened both nations. The Anglosphere, which includes Canada, Australia and New Zealand, owes much of its cohesion to the leadership of both the UK and the USA. While that's true, I think we should also consider the criticism that America has faced for its foreign policies and interventionism. The UK's alignment with the US hasn't always been popular domestically or internationally. The Iraq war, for instance, strained the relationship and highlighted the divergent public opinions within the Anglosphere. Let's discuss the present day dynamics of the Anglosphere. The shared language and cultural heritage continue to bind us, but there are also significant differences in political and social issues. How do you see the future of this relationship, Andrew? I agree. The Anglosphere's strength lies in its ability to evolve and adapt. The democratic values and legal systems we share provide a solid foundation. However, internal challenges like political polarization in the US and the UK's ongoing debates about its role post-Brexit will test this relationship. Yet I remain optimistic that the shared history and values will prevail. In closing, while American Independence Day celebrates a historic break from Britain, it also marks the beginning of a complex, intertwined relationship. Both nations have learned and benefited from each other. 
despite their differences. The future of the Anglosphere will depend on how we navigate these complexities and work together in an increasingly multipolar world. Well said, Andrew. July 4th is a reminder of the enduring spirit of independence and the importance of strong alliances. The British-American relationship has shaped the world in profound ways, and as we move forward, it's crucial to remember the shared values that unite us. The Anglosphere's future is bright, as long as we continue to uphold the principles of freedom and democracy that both nations hold dear. That's an interesting point, Piers. My early years in America certainly influenced me. Growing up in Washington, D.C. and Indiana, I was exposed to American culture, values, and the sense of possibility that America embodies. However, moving to the UK at a young age allowed me to see the contrasts and similarities between the two cultures. While my initial years in the US shaped my understanding of independence and ambition, my time in the UK refined my perspective, adding layers of heritage, stability, and a broader worldview. Can you share more about those contrasts and how they affected you? What were the biggest differences you noticed between American and British life as you transitioned from one to the other? One of the biggest contrasts I noticed was the approach to individualism versus collectivism. In America, there's a strong emphasis on individual achievement and the idea that you can rise to the top if you work hard enough. This American dream mentality is pervasive. When I moved to the UK, I found that there's more of a focus on community and social responsibility. British culture values tradition, and a certain level of social cohesion that wasn't as pronounced in my experience in America. How did these differing values shape your personal and professional life? Do you find yourself leaning more towards one cultural perspective over the other? Professionally, the American emphasis on ambition and entrepreneurship definitely influenced my drive and career choices. It's a place where thinking big is encouraged. On a personal level, I appreciate the British sense of stability and community. It's not that I lean entirely towards one perspective. Rather, I integrate both. The entrepreneurial spirit from my American upbringing fuels my ambitions, while the British values of tradition and social responsibility keep me grounded. Let's pivot back to the broader topic. Considering your unique background and experiences, how do you view the Anglosphere's role in the modern world? Do you think the shared cultural and historical ties are enough to keep these nations aligned in the face of global challenges? Let's pivot back to the broader topic. Considering your unique background and experiences, how do you view the Anglosphere's role in the modern world? Do you think the shared cultural and historical ties are enough to keep these nations aligned in the face of global challenges? Internal issues definitely pose a risk. Political polarization in the US and the ongoing debates about the UK's role post-Brexit are significant challenges. These issues can strain relationships within the Anglosphere if not managed properly. However, I believe that these nations have a strong enough foundation to overcome these challenges. It will require strong leadership and a commitment to shared values but it's possible to navigate through these turbulent times. Given your critique of America and your inclination towards the UK, do you think your early Americanization ever conflicts with your current views? Pierce, I have been meaning to tell you this for a long time, you fat, pretentious, overrated, head-giving buffoon. Since you have property in California, as you mentioned, go down to the nearest Walmart particularly the discount section with your brokey ass and get yourself a big box of yellow sticker dicks and have it the American dream, as it were. You arrogant jerk. To make a personal request, receive channel merchandise, or to just hook a brother up, hit up the cash app on the screen, or make a contribution to the PayPal shown on the screen. That will do it for this one. If you would like us to exploit or make goofy jokes about something other than sports, please leave feedback via the comment section below. If you prefer us to direct our talents towards provocative Reddit stories, unusual stuff posted on Twitter do make your voice heard below. Being that BJ is living off his savings and I am an artificially engineered figure E, we have all day to scour the internet for these types of diamonds in the muff. Ah, oh, diamonds in the rough. Okay. Well, for BJ, D, this is the Andrew Tate puppet saying, don't simp, don't cuck. 
say no to dope and be kind to animals. As for what you do to humans, I could care less and see you in the next.